Hey y'all, it's Whitney. So today's tip, tutorial, whatever, is all about setting powder. I got that question twice this weekend, um, so I wanna answer that. So it's all about setting powder. Do you need one? How to use one? All the things. Okay, so let's first start out with setting powder and why you would want one. If you have someone, if you're someone with more of an oily or combination kind of complexion, you definitely want to use a setting powder. It's gonna help your makeup stay longer, but it's also gonna help reduce some of that oil, that shine that you see throughout the day. If you are someone who does not like the dewiness or the dewy look that creams give you, you can definitely use a setting powder to help kind of make that more matte. Other reasons that you would use setting powder. Um, if you use Saints Vanilla Dust, it is almost like a brightening powder. So under the eyes, it will give you that more bright appearance um, that you're going for. As well, any setting powder that you choose to use, make sure it is a translucent shade because if you pick one that's got a little bit of a tone to it, it may change the color of your makeup. So you definitely don't want that to happen. Now, as far as ordering your products, if you are someone that is more combination and oily, you may want to couple a setting powder and a setting spray. So for me personally, I use our Saint um, Stay Spray. I use it as my primer. I spray it on with a perfector, or I dab it on with a perfector. I apply my makeup. I then will either, depending on if I'm oily or not, if I'm not feeling very oily, I'll do a setting powder and then finish with a setting spray. If I'm feeling oily, I will do the setting spray first and end on a powder. So personal preference, but again, if you're someone that's a little bit more oily, you may have to couple both to help control that oil throughout the day. So let's talk. Um, you can use, there are tons of, of setting powders. Some are loose like this, and then also Saint has a pressed one. I keep it down here with my eyeshadows because I like to keep my powders and my creams separate. So this is a pressed powder. Again, whichever you choose to use, personal preference. As far as applying your setting powder, you only want to apply that in the areas where your highlight is applied, all right? And you can apply it with something like this, like a perfector sponge or you can apply it with this end of the powder brush. So I'll do one on each side so you can see. And you do this the same for the loose as you do this pressed powder. Okay, so I'm gonna take, I'll do this one first. So this is um, the powder brush. I'm just dabbing it in and I am pressing where, I only do, like I said, this half. Pressing where, um, that highlight is. Now, you do not have to put it all down here. If you are only oily up here or in your T-zone, only put it where you feel oily. Or you can do it anywhere that there is um, the highlight, not your contour or your lip and cheek color. If you use a perfector sponge or a beauty blender, dab it on that sponge and just press it. I do typically put it on the end of my nose because I do lose a lot of product there, especially with a mask. All right. So a couple things. If you are someone who is an oily combination girl, you may want to let that product, what we call bake on, let it heat up on the skin um, and really set before dusting it off. So typically what I will do is if I use my setting powder, I will put it on like this and then I will go do my hair because you want your setting powder to bake for at least like five to seven minutes. If you are not an oily person and you're doing it really just for the matte, who knows what that is. If you're doing it just for the matte, then you can press this powder on and then take um, a nice brush and dust it off. But again, if you are someone who is very oily, let it sit here for about five to seven minutes and really bake and heat up on the skin. And then just dust it off. And like I said, this vanilla dust is a little bit bright, so it gives that a brightening illusion as well, which is really nice. 
So then you dust it all off. Now, sometimes I will have to go back in and kind of perk up my lip and cheek color just a touch after that. But that is it. That is all you do for your setting powder when setting this product. Um, so just like I said, if you're more oily, definitely, or if you're an oily gal, make sure you bake it because that makes a huge difference for me. Also coupling it with the setting spray has made a big difference um, with helping with oil control. As far as um, just the matte look, pop it on there and then take something and dust it right off and that's it. So just remember, only place it in the areas where your highlight is or where you feel that you are the most oily or you have the most shine. Again, if you're someone that has dry skin, you may not opt for using a setting powder. You may just opt for a setting spray because the cream gives that nice dewy appearance. And if you have a dry skin, you're, you're more used to that matte look and you may like the dewy appearance. If you put that powder on there, you are gonna be taking that away and still have that more matte finish. So again, if you're someone with dry skin, you may opt for just the setting spray itself. But that's my tips for you today on setting powder. I love it. I do typically only use it under my eyes. I will say I do use it sometimes with my eyeshadows. After I put an, eye, um, an eyelid primer on, I'll put a little of that setting powder on before my shadows. It really just helps keep everything in place. I love setting powder. I love setting spray. I think it makes a huge difference in the wear of your makeup throughout the day. So, all right, you guys, if you have any other questions, you want to see any other tutorials, let me know. Bye.